All right. We are back. We are back. And Roger is full of something Absolutely. to say, something he has discovered on alienation and aliens. So over to you, Roger. All right. So um, you see that um, about, about alienation, if we talk about alienation, Mm. um we think of we think of a lot of things thing is alienation is basically what we do while we are we are treating ourselves as an alien is that we we detach ourselves from whatever is there in our vicinity at that point of time we detach ourselves from all of that and mm. we just stray away we just go away from there we run away from that run. and uh, Halt, run away. Run yes, away we do. A reaction called flight. Yes. Triggered by fear. So yeah, fear we take a flight. Base. Fear is at the base of this. The sense of dis absolutely. The sense of disconnection is triggered by fear. Absolutely. Fear is hardwired when something. So you see, your alienation is your response to something that looks alien to you, something you don't recognize. True. This, is, this True. is strange. This is unfamiliar. So what do I do? My first response usually is just run away. Usually is to flee. You're told, you know, yes. when you see a bear, don't flee because the, the bear will chase you. Absolutely. Yes. So it depends on what the, the, or the source of the fear also has to be processed for you to decide your response. True it's that. Better to think away from a bear than to run away from a bear, or it may be best of all to freeze when the bear is there so that the bear goes away. One of True. those responses, freeze, is in also place. Yes. But somebody has to discover that process, no? Yes. So uh, how do you thing. discover it without getting hurt? When you're a child, uh, somebody guides you to discover it. Maybe. See the, the first, the first very native and very, you know, it's 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 yes, it's, it's the stimulus basically that you you take a flight and you stimulate it yourself by everything. Yes, but the emotion. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but then again, it also could be an opportunity for you. Uh, I mean, the opportunity that that gives you a chance to explore those parts of your mind. That generates that fear. That's creative yeah. thinking. Yes, that's creative thinking. And that's the good alienation that I'm talking about. Uh, the the drowning part, yes, we, we did the drowning part. We, we know the consequences of when mm -hmm. you drown too deep. Either you, um, you brew the poison or you... Either ways, you brew the poison either to you know, demolish everything that is around you or mm. demolish yourself. Mm. You nailed it. You nailed it. Yes. 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 Or and our job or else... is to ensure that when we, we are, you know, we are the caregivers of the very young, our first responsibility mm -hmm. is to ensure that the young person doesn't demolish themselves. Exactly. Exactly. And I think Rather, the older there is a... person takes some collateral damage from that demolition process because the older person is stronger to take it. Yes. But that is also a chance for us to, you know, um, figure out the... Boundary between demolition figure and... Figure out our... Creative... So creative destruction. I had spoken about creative destruction in one of my blogs. So yes. when you destroy, destroy mindfully. So you're destroying, you're basically destroying the the, um, the parts of your mind that generate the fear in the first place. Mm, yes. And then, then eventually you discover the process that, okay, so this is how um, we can actually move forward. And then you come back and you come back stronger then you come back without the fear. Hmm. That's what an adult does. Sometimes even the adult gets lost. The adult feels lost. Then the adult says, I don't know what to do on Facebook. And 500 people give advice. I know one shrink. 
I know one Baba, I know one temple. Just do this meditation, go to YouTube, learn music. All the advice starts pouring in. What does the healer do at that point? Is the healer supposed to be proactive and dive in? Or is the healer just supposed to be uh, present, shining the light and throwing some options, you know, bringing them to the view of that disturbed person and then quietly just leaving and becoming observer. Absolutely. Without selling an idea, pushing an idea, but just being there. Otherwise, the louder, louder. Otherwise, the healer becomes one more seller. Yes. And we don't want that. Yes. We are basically yes, exactly. trying to take down this uh, this uh, paradigm of everything being about sales, sales and a quick profit. We are looking at cooperation exactly. so that everybody is happy. Vijay and Aparajita win win. Nobody loses. Exactly. Nobody or loses. John Lennon's imagine. And I think John Lennon's imagine. We are yes. not the antithesis of John Lennon's imagine in the in the power struggle that is going on. Yes. Worldwide. Absolutely. And the hapless pawns who are caught in all this, terrified that somebody is going to kill them, somebody is going to bomb them because they become the collateral damage for the ego battle of some people somewhere. Right. I'm bigger than right. you. I won't let you get bigger yeah. than me. No, I won't let you do this to me. No, you better not. I'm the biggest guy. And these people, like the woman who crushed the snails with her objective, these people will not hesitate to kill anything in their path. You know, the general sat and the lines on the map move from side to side. What happens when the lines on the map move from side to side? They crush all the people who happen to be on the place where that line moves, right? Yes. That's what you call the fear of somebody coming and bombing you, as your friend had pointed, has, has expressed to you. Yes. About a certain superpower who will come and attack them. Thanks to another superpower right. who is needling them beyond the limits. And there'll be a third superpower watching and seeing what they can get out of this situation. Typically, you know, my neighbors, two of them will be fighting. The third one will be snooping around over there, watching with a hawk's eye to see what crumb they can pick up from there. Yeah, you see. What's on in my uh, building? This is a this is a very ground level example yes. that's happening around you, <laughs> and uh, yeah, it it is. I mean, the process is basically the same. The mindset is basically the same. Mm -hmm. The magnitude the magnitude is different, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. the mindset is the same. The way of looking at it is the same. Mm -hmm. And that's where we need to fix it, the the very core of it, mm. the very ground level of it, mm. you know, uh, before it starts expanding its magnitude. Mm -hmm. And that's where, that's I've where the healing this should happen start. Not in this building, I've seen this happen on my mother's estate. Somebody looking out, somebody, there'll be two outsiders looking out for an advantage. There'll be an insider there who cashes in. And betrays the family, mm -hmm. betrays the clan because they're looking out for that. They want the crumbs from that advantage. So they'll put their nose in and broker something between those two outsiders. All the time, I've seen this drama play so many times in real life that when I see the superpowers doing this, I know exactly what is happening. Some people are naive exactly. about it. They say, Ayo, there's a war. I tell them, look, 24-7, 365, there's been a war in my life. I've always been sitting with popcorn watching a war. Sometimes some shrapnel comes and hits me. Also, I pull it out and I carry on because the next war is about to come up. 
exactly any of these times i could have died in one of these wars and we have to stop these wars but then it's it's with each of us to stop these wars it's not only with those with the war mongers it's also with the people who are naive enough to get pawned you and see the thing is yes uh, the, the thing, thing is uh, the thing is that um, the the pattern that we are talking about mm-hmm. um, that's been going on around you mm-hmm. let's say the mm-hmm. the incidents that you are talking about mm-hmm. that is according to my thinking i think the poison has already been brewed there mm-hmm. the poison has already been brewed and it's it's spilling it's spilling mm-hmm. very slow it's spilling spilling in small drips probably but then again mm-hmm. it is spilling mm-hmm. the poison is being brewed mm-hmm. so now the question arises that is there a way that mm-hmm. even after when the poison the potion has been made the process of making the poison has started mm. we can demolish that is there a way uh, that we can demolish that even after the process has started that's my question to you is there a way even after the process has started well one of the yes. ways one of the ways that people imagine will work and will fix this is bandaid that's the last thing one should do because wounds fester under bandaid so what does one do does one dive in head on one could get injured and killed if one dives in head on you know we had all these people these rebels of another era you know who who would who would go in their idealism they dive in head on they would kill people they would kill themselves they would you know they would become martyrs is that very productive that isn't i not at all it's a it's a not waste of life it's a waste of life and it it also it's a waste of up, life it sets up a precedent which you know which it doesn't work it works temporarily but it doesn't work in the long run and if you uh, if these people these people have served the purpose at a certain time but if they become permanent icons that could be dangerous also see one thing yes, we have to very. learn is that there there are no sacred cows there is no ideology set in stone the only constant is change and this chakra tirtha comes from there you know it is it is a swirling stream and there is always movement in that and the moment that movement stops some ideology is set in stone some person becomes the good guy some other person becomes the ga- bad guy and you slap these labels on them and these labels stay for all time depending on who has slapped the label see like you have two exactly. political parties two big political parties typically it's uh, in fact it's better to have mm-hmm. many more political parties i think but when you have two of definitely them, yes there's this black and white binary there's a whole set of people who says he is white he is black there's another set of people who says the exact opposite and all the Absolutely. while these people are repeating this mantra they are repeating this mantra like a stuck record meanwhile the personalities of these two have changed the white one has turned black and the black oh. one has turned white un- unnoticed by you and you still carry on with the same mantra that this guy is see it's a very common thing and then it's too late and then it all your illusion delusion comes crashing down very typically you know my brother won't hurt me my neighbor won't hurt me i've had this with a neighbor you try your best to think mm-hmm. for the sake of somebody's mother for the sake of their grandmother for the sake of your 50 year long relationship you don't want to think the worst of someone but that worst is is your face is exactly that to that worst all the time and you're not accepting it you're seeing those red flags all along but you're in de- denial because no this is my favorite person 
he can do no wrong. And this is what I'm seeing in this polarization in the world, which is leading to enmity, leading to war. It's a severe lack of realism. Common it is true. need a lot Basically, more awareness. Uh... Awareness is lacking. And awareness is something yes, because uh... education. Indoctrination is the way exactly. we educate. It should be the opposite. I'm coming back to our same Absolutely. political thinking. The most basic thing that you must yes. needs to be stimulated and encouraged in any young person is critical thinking. Because curiosity is the first step of that critical thinking. You say what, why as a child. Yes. You investigate. You're told not to yes. investigate and you're told this is what you should believe. Exactly. Yes, that's true. That's then true. you're told this is what you that's should true. believe Very for true. your good. This is what you should believe for greater good and so on. This narrative keeps getting dinned into you till by the time you come out of school. Most people are not aliens. There's, there may be one solitary alien like you or me who come out still questioning and who go through life still questioning. And who have finally come together, you know, at different stages. You and I are at different stages of life, but somehow we have met and connected. And yes. we both feel, though we may both come from different perspectives and have a different set of prospective solutions to this, we both feel that there is what we both have in common is critical thinking. Yeah, that's true. And this is what I don't... That's very true. Anyway. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, you mentioned a very good point over here that uh, by the time by the time we go out of school, mm. nobody is an alien anymore. Mm. So, uh, so do you think that, you know, um, when we get in, into the school, the primary school, the pre-primary school, the mm. kindergarten, mm. Um, everybody is an alien to each other, probably. At the starting point, yes. In the starting point, yes, because everybody is different. I and... recall I had no friends. Yes. And do you think that we should encourage um, the thought of, you know, welcoming the aliens just as they are, rather than making them, you know, not so aliens to each other? Yes, I think so. You have because at that point... point has to be as you are when you're very young. Because that you makes you an alien and not an alien at the same time. Yes, yes. And I think that's what we need. Never not aliens. <laughs> Have one more catchphrase, no. Never not broken, never not healing, never not aliens. Which means never not aliens. you are always... Uh, in a state of unknowing about something hmm. and a state of wanting to know. The state the curiosity of unknowing, remains. The state of unknowing is the initial start of being an alien. That is yes. an unknown field. The normal reaction which you are hardwired for or maybe uh, your hardwiring has, uh, you know, your hardwiring may be fear, but then primitive, primitive humans had fear, but they also had curiosity. They would not have evolved without that curiosity. So you see, when you think, they back, did. when you think back, they had the optimal balance of fear and curiosity. Otherwise, the race would have died out. Exactly. Exactly. So we again need to come back to that optimum balance of fear and curiosity. So what does fear? Yeah, fear absolutely. is a primitive response. 
from fear, fear is a very primitive response curiosity. yes but curiosity should not kill the cat because we are not cats and we don't have nine lives exactly so it may not be satisfaction that brings us back it may be the end and when you see a species overall there will be a sacrificial member who who is curious and pays the price for it absolutely and from that person who pays the price the others learn right yes so how do you say that nobody pays the price difficult question if nobody it's a very difficult the price question. nobody would die we'd be overpopulated i know that's a stretch i'm <laughs> going several steps ahead it's not no that is that is a yeah keeping I mean, that that's a physical balance process so people... that you know you are curious yeah. enough Uh, uh, that means cooperation nobody steps out to be curious alone somebody is curious somebody is there to be as the be the observer so it's a sense of community where there is yes. the curious one and there are others who are ready to pull him back should he go too deep so it's back to my swimming coach who encouraged me to dive into a new experience yeah. but was there to pull me out should it get to be a risky experience and yes i had fear exactly but the way he motivated me i also had curiosity but why did i want to learn swimming i don't think i was particularly um, i mean it's it's because i've been told it's a life skill you must learn swimming you have a facility don't waste it you know it's it's that kind of thing but it's only after he made me uh, take this you know this um, trip across the pool from the deep end to the shallow that i felt the joy of swimming the joy of this process and that is when i decided to actually enroll in the summer vacation for swimming classes wow <laughs> not not there this was in school you could go for swimming i think every day or twice a week three times a week whatever and schools as usual you know in their typical way of my school is better than yours are always always focused on creating champions that was one thing i found very painful i would have found sports more interesting if the focus had not been on picking the good ones out and making them better while the bad ones just went by the wayside yeah we all have a physical prowess which can be tapped into in different directions but that get that gets sadly neglected and some and those kids are are stereotyped as oh that one is good in studies that one is a nerd slap the label on because it's see, that's how... slap the label on and it's easy to go with those who are showing you know who are showing the um, ability to make their own talents flower without your struggling too much yeah. to to assist that process which means basically once again the mentor doesn't enjoy a challenge now this mentor enjoys a challenge send me the the most recalcitrant or the student you know if you send me an unmusical student i would find that more interesting than a musical student a student who who comes to me sings effortlessly and goes off i would tell that student sing effortlessly i will guide you from time to time but now get out of the way this student doesn't yeah. know what music is but all all of us have music within us all of us respond to sound so let me see where i yes, can go with do. this student and that would be my challenge yeah and i would make that student curious about music playing maybe all Absolutely. kinds of music for them till i found one that they found resonance with even if i didn't find you see, resonance that's with. you see your parents you see that's what you were talking about 
they say learn the sitar they say learn the piano learn whatever it is maybe that child is interested in rap or interested in rock and roll or that child's musical sense is drawing them in a different direction so the parent has to absolutely the parent has to again challenge themselves and go against their own grain to see what is motivating the child to go in that direction that's what i'm that's what i that's what i'm implying when i when i say that you know welcoming the alien yes you know um because if 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 you kill the alien initially mm-hmm. and when the alien comes back later on that's 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 not a very good alien that's a zombie oh uh, well you Maybe kill the zombie. alien and the alien comes back as a zombie or you kill the alien and the alien is reborn as a monster yeah and that's harmful rather you welcome the alien in the first place mm mm-hmm. and it flourishes it it blooms like a flower because there are so many kinds of flowers you you don't say my garden doesn't you see the, our attitude towards weeds today we are studying weeds a lot more the ancients knew yes. all about yes. weeds most of our medicines in natural medicine medicines come from weeds mm. medicines come yeah, from things we find by accident i mean even absolutely. even the you know the penicillin about which people thump their chests you know and say ha ah, the, the you know the discovery of the that came out of an accident yes yes and we have another uh, medicine now which will not which dare not be named on youtube which also came out of an accident but we will not go into that absolutely but then again we have grown this habit of you know um giving shape to the weeds uh you know uh, you know putting forcefully giving it a giving it a shape so that it looks appealing to us so that it's you know it's not weed anymore it's 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 a it's a structure mm. it's a mm. man made structure the alien is gone there mm. it's not an alien do we do that or we exterminate the weed because it's in the way so you see those children Absolutely. who are non performers maybe we don't physically mm-hmm. exterminate them but for practical purposes they exter- exterminated and become the marginalized ones in society absolutely, absolutely. whereas maybe uh, maybe they they the weeds whatever they are growing there and you think they are in your way but they are not in your way they are part of the ecosystem there's something going on there in the earth and they are contributing to it and because you exterminate them with all your herbicides definitely. whatever you use on definitely yes. you are damaging the ecosystem and now we are learning this and now my internet is unstable well i never so are we going to get hold of a third internet as a backup and so on <laughs> till we have n number of internet connections here so that at least one of them will not fail your broadband isn't back yet my broadband is back it, it was going strong yesterday today at 6 o'clock just when i decided to get online my broadband decides that i will throw a little tantrum i will be an alien i will be alienated from you because heck you know you know you have a 4g now so use it let's what you use it so it's basically the same thing you know this rivalry absolutely <laughs> well for now will this see one or other will be unstable you know the earth is shaking so let's go with the instinct. yes sir. i always say that we are on a flight remember with our makeup on absolutely you're on you're the pilot today with your glasses on you look very much like you're going to fly a plane <laughs> and i look today i look very much like i will spill the coffee on someone <laughs> in fact i'm taking a whole hour to drink my own coffee it's it's just one of those days when i am sleepy 
and we have two minutes left and i think this has this has been a wonderful session so we will come back for the third one and wrap absolutely it because we are both very tired and absolutely. i absolutely audience is also getting sick and tired of us audience <laughs> tell us <laughs> yeah we'll come back shortly we'll come back shortly we will refill our coffee cups and come back and we will uh, come Absolutely. back with some solutions on how to take the world in a good direction where aliens Absolutely. don't become zombies that's what we intend to no do there no more zombies and everyone is awake and aware and Definitely. hopefully yes. we will get uh, we will reduce the number of psychopaths or we will rather we will zombify the, the psychopaths instead of destroying the weeds that's the intention so yes. yes that's the intention so here goes back back to the kitchen for more coffee and maybe you can get your Absolutely. guitar and sing us a song for the last round so prepare right. a song on alienation and tune up your guitar <laughs> right people sure. bye bye for now okay bye bye